Hello, it's so nice to see you back and today I thought we'll do a winter scene with some um, warm colors, uh, a big mountain and some very nice evergreens and bushes. So what I, have, what I have done already in here is that I have covered my canvas with a thin even coat of liquid white and it's all wet and slick and ready to go. So I'm gonna start today with my one inch brush and I'm gonna start with um, a little bit of cadmium yellow it is just cadmium yellow with a little bit of bright red into this but very little color, very very little, we don't need much we brush mix them now I want to have a sun somewhere in here in the sky and I decide that I want a nice glowing here, so I'll make this circular pattern. And it's so easy, you just do a nice orange circle and you're ready to go. I'm gonna wash my brush. And we wash our brushes with odorless paint thinner. We shake off the excess paint thinner, we need to dry it thoroughly. And now we can continue with a little bit of titanium white. Let's take some titanium white in here. And I will take the least little touch of a legend crimson. I just want a lighter uh, pinkish glow in the sky. We're still using the same brush. And let's go just in here and start using our crisscross strokes. And we work this outside like this. And by the time we have the liquid white on, it's so easy to blend. Just like so. And now, still using the same brush, I will just wipe it off. And I want to take a little bit of dark sienna into this. But very little color on again, we don't need very much color. And we'll go just above the pink and work this upwards. I am really looking forward to doing some uh, you know some warm glows into the painting today. and always blending downwards with crisscross strokes. Now with the same brush I will go into some Van Dyke brown very very little color tap this nicely I will come up here and add a little brown to our sky little bit more color and as we have a liquid white on the canvas it gets lighter and lighter down towards the base without it we couldn't have done all these nice things going on in the sky alright I will wash my brush one more time shake it off And we really, really have to get all the paint thinner out of our brushes because if we come with paint thinner up there, we're going to destroy everything we have done already. So I decided that I want a little bit of reflections. I want some water in here. So what I really want to do is to take the same colors, the same orange color, and go right here and reflect some in the water. And we're using uh, straight strokes, as you can see. Wipe this off. I go into my pink again. And go right here. And we'll just fill this in nicely. And we will also come back and blend all this 
a little bit more paint. And we're actually trying to reflect the same colors into the water as they are on the sky. It will give us uh, a very realistic effect. But we're gonna cover most of this anyway. A little bit more of the cyan color. And we basically need we need straight strokes. So they have that mirror effect in our water. A little bit more cyan to the other side. And I'm using the one inch brush because it's handy right now for me. A little bit more painting here. And a little bit of Van Dyke brown now. A little bit brown to the other side too. Okay, and that's all for now. Now we come back to blending these. I'm gonna wash my brush one more time. So I want, I will take a clean two inch brush and I'm gonna blend this out. And I'm gonna start from right in between the orange and the pink color and using crisscross strokes we're gonna bring all this together, we're gonna soften it and we never touch the dark color and come uh, right down to the lighter color because we're gonna mess up everything and we really don't want that and we really need to bring all this together soften it up And you can do that as many times as you want to achieve the desired lightness, the desired softness. And can you see the natural, the natural, um, you know, the natural feeling from the Sienna to the Van Dyke Brown? And this is what we really want to achieve. We want to achieve a natural effect on the sky. Now I'm gonna take another clean brush, put several in here, and I'm gonna blend the water right now by pulling downwards, softening up the edges. We really want to bring all this together the same way we did with the sky. It's very easy. It's a nice paint to start with, you know. It will give you a lot of practice. Now very lightly will go across to give the reflection appearance to this. Wipe, up, wipe off the excess paint and I will go very lightly above the sky but very gently. Make sure you use a light touch for that. And if there is something that you do not like, like in here, you can make sure you have a clean brush and just brush it out. As you can see, we do not make mistakes. Very lightly go across. And that's easy, you have a nice background to start playing. Now, I, as I said, I want to have a sun in here, so I will just take my finger and take a little bit of titanium white into this and make a sun in here. Just like so, very, very easy to do. You just take a little paint in your figure. Now, I want to remove the excess paint that I left with my finger on the, um, on the sun, so I will just take a clean knife and try to scrap off the excess paint with a very, very uh, quick move and then very lightly go across let me find my clean brush and then you work this very easily, very nicely okay now 
I want to have I want to have a mountain in my painting today, so I'm gonna use my knife and I'm gonna make a lavender color. We're gonna use a lot of lavender color today and take my alizarin crimson. I can take this too. A little bit of phthalo blue. Now I'm I will try and push the mountain a little bit further, so I will take some titanium white. As we said in the last episode, the farther we go, the lighter the color is. So I'm gonna make a nice uh, purple color in here, and we mix this thoroughly. Pull the paint out very flat, and it's important to to have a flat paint on the palette because we want a nice even distribution of color on the palette and we just cut off a little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife and we want to decide where our mountain lives so in my word the mountain lives right here and we push very very uh, you know we push with lots of strength and you add as many peaks as you want in your mountain and the only thing we care right now about is the nice outside edge of the mountain the peaks and stuff like this we scrape off all the excess paint with our knife and this does two things it removes the excess paint so it is easier for us to blend and it also helps us apply the highlights uh, much easier so make sure you have removed as much paint as possible and I will take a dry two inch brush and blend this downwards and just by falling the shape of the mountain we just blend downwards and always remember that the mountain is more distinct up there than it is down there there's a lot of mist going going on here something like so and I want I want to fix this thing here. It's so easy to fix things using the wet and wet technique because everything is wet and if there is something that you do not like you just scrub it off and blend it out. It's that easy. We don't make mistakes for real. Okay, let me wash this brush again. I got them all dirty today. We shake it off real well, we really, really need dry brushes when we paint this technique. Paint thinner is by far your worst enemy in here. We need uh, dry brushes and a wet surface. And we try... We try to make the brushes as uh, dry as possible. Okay, I beat the bristles against the easel. Just do not try this at home, okay. Now for the highlights I'm gonna use some titanium white and the least little touch of bright red into this but very little amount because it is very very strong. Okay, I pull out very flat and cut across the same way I did with a mountain color. So the secret in here is to apply no pressure at all. We really really want no pressure. So we go up there and we just let it bounce and break like this start from the top and using no, no pressure at all and you, it's here that you need the very firm and dry paint it's very important to have a dry paint otherwise it won't break I come up right here 
And as you can see with one go, I can make all of these holes and bumps right on the mountain. A little more paint down here. And I'm holding the knife very, very lightly. I do not put my finger on the blade because I want to guide, to guide it with this hand. It's very important to hold the tools correctly. A little bit more snow on the mountain. And you can take this kind of scenes and turn it into your own taste. You can change the season, you can change everything really. A little bit more snow in here. Right, so now that I have applied most of the snow, I want to have uh, some shadows right behind, so I will take a little bit of my white. There is some lavender in here, but it doesn't matter right now. I just want a nice blue, light blue color. This is too, too, too light for me. A little bit more white. And we always mix the color thoroughly in here. Pull out very flat, we cut across and we go right behind the snow, the highlights and using no, no pressure at all we follow the angles of the mountain right behind the highlights it's a very very light touch just wherever you want the shadows to be a big shadow in here And you can push this peak back by applying the shadow right above this highlight. And that's easily. We have pushed this peak back a little bit of shadow in here. And you can always come back with a with highlight color. I'm using titanium white and the least little touch of bright red and you can fix some edges that you might not like so I will come in here and make a more distinct peak using no pressure at all and always remember to add the necessary shadows in order to make the mountain more realistic a bit more here and there. Okay. Now I want to create the illusion of mist in the bottom of the mountain. So I will take a clean and dry two inch brush and just tap downwards in here. Always following the angles of the mountain. Very gently. I remove the excess color and we blend it upwards like this. Always, always following the angle of the mountain. A little bit tapping in here too. Very nicely. And the more you tap, the mystery it gets. So what I've decided and will add a little bit of interest is that I want another peak in here so I will take a little bit more white and push this one back like so. A little bit more paint. See how easy it is? A little bit more shadow right in here. Tap this nicely. And that easy, we have a nice little mountain to play with, and very, very quickly. Okay, now I want some faraway trees in here, so I'm gonna take uh, my palette knife and gonna mix just a little bit more lavender color and make it a little bit darker than what the mountain is. A little bit more crimson, a little bit more of the pale blue take all this too. Gonna say it's in a little paint. A 
and this comes a little bit more to the bluish hue but you decide the value of your color and we actually need a lot of paint for this in order to load the brush as necessary okay and today I thought we'll use a big a number six fan brush in order to make faraway trees and we're gonna load the brush full of paint both sides, load both sides as necessary and we'll just come right here and we tap downwards and try to make them as close as possible and fill these gaps in we don't want this to look like a fence post use both sides of the brush and we try to keep them straight we really need a realistic effect for this and we try to save this little misty area a little bit more color And it doesn't matter if some of your um, trees are lighter than others because this adds a little bit of interest. Some are closer, some are further away. It really is nice. And you choose how many layers of trees you want in your world. It's up to you really. A little bit more color. Always remember to save the little misty areas that we have in the mountain. Some are taller, some are shorter. It's up to you to decide. Just try not to make all of them the same height. Add a little bit of interest in your painting. And I'm using both sides in order to save paint and time and if you are running out of paint it's really up to you to load the brush as necessary maybe some in here are taller and I love these colors, I like warm with the scenes the same way I do with cold scenes they are very nice, probably my favorite. Okay. And as you can see, you know, it's very, very important at some point to take a couple of, backs, of steps back and see how the painting goes. I mean that right now I'm satisfied with what I have done. I have managed to push everything back. I have layers, I have the sun, I have the mountain, I have the mist. It's very important to have the mist and then I have the trees and now in order to make it even more interesting I will add a little bit more mist into my painting as we did last time we take a big brush and just smash the bottom of this and see how easy it is you just tap with a lot of pressure a lot of strength and this is where you need the liquid white, it's very, very important. If we didn't have the liquid white right now, we wouldn't be able to do this. Just dilute the bottom of the trees. Now, very lightly, gonna lift upwards. And that's easy, we have a nice misty effect in our painting. So now I want to have uh, some bushes and trees, but you know, I really, really need them to be far away. So I'm gonna mix a little bit more, a little bit more lavender, but in just a bit of uh, darker value. So I'm gonna take some crimson, crimson and paler blue. 
mixes very nicely on the palette. A little bit, a little bit more blue for me. And I'm gonna add the least little touch of white and bring it to a very nice tone, a desired tone. A little bit of white. I kind of like it. Maybe a little bit more white. But very little bit white because things are coming closer to us now. Okay. Very nice. And this time I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a one inch brush and I'm gonna have some bushes and trees in here. I'm gonna fill this in and we take the brush and as we did last time we pull the paint downwards. We really need a lot of paint for this. And remember to have the right uh, curve right on the edge of the brush so Let's decide when, where we want our bushes to be. And we just throw them in. Try to save the misty area we made. And we use a lot of pressure for this. Always use the rounded corner up. And it's very important not to let the, bright, the brush to slide. It's very, very important. Now I want to have some reflections right here in the water, so I will just reverse my brush. And this is where you decide the lay of the land too. A little bit more paint. Little bit more paint. So I'm gonna use a one inch brush. No, I prefer the two inch brush actually. And I'm gonna pull this down. Decide where you want your land to start and pull downwards. It's very important to pull straight down. we really, really pull the paint down and then very lightly go across to give us a nice water effect and I've also decided that I want some evergreen trees that will also help us push everything back and I'm gonna use the same color, I'm gonna take a number 3 fan brush and load the brush full of paint lots of paint and we'll go up here and just using the corner of the brush just the corner we can make an evergreen tree that easy and that quickly and maybe another one in here and you decide how many bushes and trees you want in your painting I'm just here to show you how to make them. Another one, a little one in here. And remember that we want, don't want much detail yet. These are far, far away for us. Let's make a bigger one in here. And we just start with the corner of the brush and use more and more of it as we go downward. Another one here. Just the corner. And we apply more and more pressure as we go downward. So I want to highlight my bushes in here and I'm gonna take, I'm gonna clean the spot in here to work. I don't want any lavender color into my white. I'm gonna put snow on my bushes 
I'm gonna dip the one's brush into a small amount of liquid white and the liquid white is in here just to thin the paint down and we really really need a lot of paint for this I'm gonna add the least little touch of bright red into this just to give a nice sparkling pinkish glow to my bushes a little bit more of the liquid white The liquid white is in here only to thin the paint down. Pull in one direction, rounded corner up, and let's start from the walls that are further behind. We'll start from this one. A very, very gentle push. Reverse it. Make the reflection. It's actually quite the same as we did last week. This will give you a lot of practice. It's very important to get used to the equipment. Some reflections in the water. And see how we can push these trees further behind with just a touch. It's very, very important to add distance and depth in our paintings. Probably a bigger tree in here. And try to save some dark areas in between so they won't look very flat. I love a little bit more with my bright red. And if your paint won't stick, just add the least little touch of liquid white. The thinner paint will stick to a thick paint. Lots of leaves, thousands and thousands of leaves live in your brush. You really have, you just have to push them out. Now, let's make a bravery test. We need the most gentle touch impossible. So I'm gonna pull this down, pull it straight down, but very gently. Pull straight down, caress the canvas, and now very lightly go across. And this gives us a very nice water effect. Now I want something to hold all this, so I'm gonna take just straight titanium white on my palette. The same way we did with the snow on the mountain, we just uh, spread and cut the paint on our palette. And I'm gonna put some snow in. The rear bank is frozen in here. A little bit more paint. And always follow the lay of the land. It's very, very important. Something like so. Okay, now I'm gonna take and spread this out. I want a water line and I just spread a thinner paint, a thinner white paint on my palette and I cut across. It's very easy. I just spread it and cut across like this. I'm gonna start from here and we try to make these water lines as straight as possible. It's very important to make them straight a little bit more in here and that's easy we have some some nice uh, bushes, the trees and everything is pushed back and you have a land that you don't like and is very distinct you can just blend it inwards onto the canvas with your palette knife. Okay, now I want to come forward in this painting and I want some bushes and trees in here that, I, that these things are gonna push everything back. Okay, so let's take and mix a darker lavender. Probably I'm gonna add a little bit of Van Dyke Brown too, so I'll take some black, some paler blue. 
some Van Dyke brown and a little in crimson. As you can see in my palette I only have the colors I use. They are always in the same order so it's easier for you to know what kind of colors I'm using. Mix the paint very nicely. Lots of paint. And I want to have a couple of big evergreens. But before that I think that I have to decide where I want my bushes to be right in here in the foreground. So I will take a big brush, I will find a 2 inch brush and we just pull the paint down the same way we did with a 1 inch brush later we always always load the brushes like this when it comes to foliage with these specific brushes ok, round the corner and we just decide where you want your bushes to be and fill this in Can you see the thousands and thousands of leaves? And you can do it too, it's very easy. Everybody can paint like this. It is made this way that everybody can become the artist they are always wanted. Some people admire others for painting, but they are afraid to try. And I think nobody should be afraid to paint. Because it is very easy and very pleasant to paint, especially in this way, it's very, very easy, I think. No, I'm sure I'm not. I don't think I'm very sure. Okay, so I have saved the reflection here. It's up to you to decide if you want this even further behind. But I'm kind of, I'm kind of happy with this. Okay. So I'm gonna take my palette knife. And by the time I have made this mess in here, I will just save this back into a big pile because I will load the fan brushes easier that way. So I'm gonna use the same dirty fan brush that I made the back evergreens and load the brush full, full of paint. We're using all the dark colors loaded with a lot of paint and decide where your evergreen wants to live and in my world an evergreen tree lives right here just make the center and now by using the corner of the brush we push downwards and we really really need a lot of paint for that and it's okay to go back and load the brush unnecessary. Alright. And let's give him a little frame in here. Let's make another evergreen in here. I start with a corner and very little pressure. And as I go downward I add more and more pressure and more and more of the brush. And in just a matter of seconds, I have made an evergreen tree, okay, it's that easy. But it just takes a lot of practice, the right brushes and the, and the right paint. Now in here I want another evergreen. Make the center. And using the corner, I just do the same thing. Do not let the brush to slide. And if one side is running out of paint, you just turn it, turn it on the other side, and there we go. And I've decided that I want this tree to be outside the canvas. It's okay with me. It will add a little bit more interest. And maybe we have another tree in here, a smaller one. And this gives you good practice. It's up to you to decide the colors, the season, the brushes. You, you can paint these trees with a fine brush, the one inch brush, the two inch brush. 
Let's make another evergreen tree. They are so fun to make. And I would go. I would go right here. I'm gonna come above this bush. But a lot of paint, very, very important. And now in here I have a lot of thin paint, so I'm gonna thin it down with a little bit of paint thinner. I added the least little touch of paint thinner, and I will come above this without having a big problem. But a lot of paint. And if you've gotten a little bit of the lighter paint, you can always come again, you can back, come back in here and fill this in. Okay, now I want to add some tree trunks in here, so I'm gonna take the small knife, I'm gonna take a little bit of white, a little bit of dark sienna, and I'm gonna leave it marbly like this. Cut off a little roll of paint, and go in here and just put a nice tree trunk. I decided that I want this tree a little bit crooked. And in here. And make sure you make the trunk wider as you go downward. A little bit more paint in here. And that's easy. You know, you can just add some indications here and there of some tree trunks that are left roaming around the painting. They will add a little bit of history of interest. And you can also scratch some sticks and twigs that are playing around in the foreground, just using the very edge of the brush. Okay. So what I want to do now is add some highlights on my evergreen trees before I start highlighting my bushes. So I have to clean my brush, remove most of the dark paint that is on the brush, on a paper towel. It will save me some paint from settling down into my thinner bucket. Dry it very well on the paper towel. Remove the paint thinner. And now I'm gonna actually do the same with the bushes. I'm gonna thin down some white and add some highlights. I'm gonna take some liquid white. And the liquid white is only here to thin the paint. You can also use paint thinner, but in this one, the liquid white works better because it sticks better. A little bit more pinkish glow. And now it's very important to know where your light source is. So I'm gonna take the edge of the brush and by the time here is my sun, here are the trees. I'm gonna take gonna take my brush, the edge of the brush, and start from up there. And as you can see, I'm mixing no mud because I have a thinner paint. It's very, very important to thin your paint down when you do that. A little bit more of the liquid white, a little bit of my pink. And let's paint this tree now. Start from the very top. And this is a light, light touch. Remove any any purple that you have on my brush. Let's paint this one too. Lots and lots of leaves. Leave up there. A little bit more bright red. And now my sun is in here, so I have to highlight this side of the tree. And I'm going to start with a bigger one.
and it goes darker and darker as you go downwards. It's very important to go darker in here because there is less light going on. A little bit more paint, a little bit more of the liquid white, a little bit more bright red. And then come right here and highlight this tree. And that easy, we have some fantastic evergreens. And you know, in this in this part, I'm not very satisfied because I had a lot of paint. I got some white paint, but you know, you can always scrape this off with your palette knife and just paint the tree and do the same thing we did. But it's okay with me. I don't want to waste time doing this. So I'm gonna take my one's brush that has the highlight color on. I will go into my liquid white and my titanium white. Love the brushes full of paint, love the bristles. A little bit more bright red. And you decide where your bushes live. Always bush, always paint one bush at a time. And it's important to layer them. Try to make one after another starting with the furthest one behind a nice bush leaves right in here a white bush just spread all over the place a little bit more paint a little bit more my bright red and another bush leaves in here And this one enjoys the sun, he just he's having fun with other bushes and trees. A big bush lives there. And let's come up here. And can you see that you, you actually push the trees back? It's very, very nice to achieve such an effect with so little without even trying actually. I will go on this side, I will add another bush right here. And I'm using no pressure at all, I let the brush do the work. And I also let the paint do the work. We're using very firm and dry paint, so it's actually very easy to layer them. A little bit more paint. And probably I have a bush that comes from the outside of the painting and pushes the others back. Then comes another one. A little bit more of the liquid white. If your paint doesn't stick, it's always up to you to thin it down, to load the brush unnecessary. You will learn that, you will learn that by experience. What I'm trying to show you is that everybody can do it and no matter what happens in a painting like this you can always paint fantastic effects. Another bush like he right here. Okay, now I also decide that I want to bring uh, this area together. I'm gonna wipe off most of my dirty and I will just come up there and using the brush sidewards I'm actually bringing some foliage and some grass onto the snow and it makes it look more realistic it brings everything together I'm gonna scratch off some sticks and twigs with a clean knife and these sticks add a lot more interest into the painting and try try to scratch them in the dark areas we always leave dark areas in here so we don't end up with a flat painting okay if you want you can stop here but I want to do something else today I want to add a big tree a big tree trunk so for that I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the filbert brush. 
this has uh, a round corner as you can see and I'm gonna go into some Van Dyke brown it's, this is just straight Van Dyke brown this is a bravery test and this is actually something that will add another layer to our painting so I decide that I want a big tree trunk right here so I will go above the sky and that's easy, I have made a tree trunk you decide the width, you decide the length I just want it a little bit, a little bit thicker and you use more and more pressure as you go downwards we want a thicker bottom than we want right here on top and fill this in nicely as necessary but it's very important to load lots and lots of paint on your brush and I tell you why I tell you what I want another tree another tree right here and I also saved the evergreen back here and I added a little curve so I don't uh, made them I didn't make them both uh, straight this adds a little bit of interest a little more paint and follow the shape you made in the first place nice dark trunks nice dark trees okay now I'm gonna take the liner brush and take some paint thinner, a lot of paint thinner. I will go into the same color and thin it out, but I want more paint thinner, more paint thinner in order for the paint flow on my palette. A little bit more actually. This paint is very very firm, but this is how we need it. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to layer. Uh, these trees in front of all these layers of paint. So let's decide where we want our tree trunks. And using just a corner, just the very top, I'm gonna make some sticks and twigs right here. And if your paint won't flow, just add a little bit, a little touch of paint thinner and we really need lots and lots of paint a couple of a couple of arms into our trees and wherever you want you can add the effect you want really it's really really up to you there's a bit more paint thinner for me will come above this and will push everything back. As you can see I have a couple of sticks right above the other things I painted, the bushes, the trees. And this is good practice really. Just make friends with a liner brush. Another nice branch in here. Okay. Now I want to highlight the tree trunk and for this I'm going to use my palette knife. I'm going to take some white, I'm going to take some dark sienna and leave it marbly, okay, leave it marbly. Cut off a little roll of paint and by the time the sun is up here I want to have highlights from this side so I will start by touching the canvas very gently with my roll of paint. It's very important to load the brush correctly for this one. With just touch and follow how the tree trunk goes. And that's easily you can highlight your tree trunk. I'm gonna go to the other one too. And we're just touching, everybody can do this. You just need to have the right paint. A very, very thick paint.
There's a bit more paint. But can you see, can you feel the bark? It's that easy to make, really. Okay. Now I want to have some reflected light, some uh, dark bark, actually, indication of darkness right behind. So I'm going to take some titanium white, some phthalo blue. That's what we're coming forward. We want a darker blue. And I will also add a little bit of Van Dyke Brown to this. We we'll keep it marbly. Keep it marbly and just go across and make a little roll of paint in the edge of the knife. And we do the same thing. Just touch. And it's easier for me that I am right-handed to highlight, to actually put the paint on the trunk like this. And I'm always holding the knife the correct way. I do not put my finger on the blade because otherwise I will make a blob of paint. I just want some nice highlights. And these are actually some of the nicest highlights you can make using this technique. They're realistic. And when the paint dries, you can actually feel the bark on the canvas. It's it's a very, very nice effect. Very nice feeling. We're gonna bring this together. Now I'm gonna take some straight Van Dyke Brown. A little bit of Van Dyke Brown and bring this together. So we do not know when the one starts and the other stops. Just bring this together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. It teaches us a lot of things. It gives us practice with all the equipment. It gives you practice with a knife. We made the mountain, we made the trunks. And next time we're gonna do a black canvas. I want to make a scene that takes place deep in the woods. It's one of my favorite pieces. Just a little bit of dark here and there. And we have made some fantastic trees. I'm gonna fix the bottom of this, gonna take the one inch brush with some paint and bring this together. So we actually have the trunks inside of our land. And the last thing I want to do is to take a little bit of liquid white on my palette with my liner brush, take the least little touch of paint thinner and I'm gonna put some snow right on my branches because this is a snowy scene. I'm gonna go just above this and give the indication of snow it down as necessary. A little bit of snow up there. A little bit more snow in here, and it's also it's also very easy to mess up in here. But don't fight it. Don't be afraid of it. When this dries, it will look very very realistic and very nice that you have actually put snow on top of the branches and they are not bare because the rest of the trees show us that there is snow a little bit more up there right above the brown and we thin down the paint as necessary let's come up to this one this has lots of snow this is a strong branch. A little bit more in here and in here. Take this one too. And I always, always load the brush as necessary.
this one. And this is the last thing I do because I want to finish with the trunk, the highlights and all this. Because you can actually see that there is snow on top of the branches. Otherwise, if I put the snow in first and then go with a highlight, uh, I'm gonna destroy everything. I might actually be able to take some of this thin paint and get in here and mix mud and I don't want that and can you see now how distinct this branch is and by the time it's thinner it doesn't mix up with what's underneath so that's it for today I really hope you enjoyed it we have a very nice warm scene with lots of layers, lots of depth and lots of interest different aspects all over the painting and we'll call it finished for today I hope you enjoyed it I'll see you next time with a black canvas uh, a scene deep in the woods with a very nice light source we're gonna use transparent colors so until next time happy painting take care and I'll see you soon